Welcome to the Whole Food Plant-Based Cooking Show, where we make plant-based cooking easy. I'm Jill, and today we are making a delicious pineapple upside down cake. Grab a plate, cause it's the Offy Whole Food Plant-Based Cooking Show. Today's show is brought to you in part by Compliment. As healthy as it is, did you know there are a handful of missing or hard to get nutrients from a plant-based diet? The latest research suggests that complementing your diet with a few specific vitamins, minerals, and omega-3s will help boost your energy and keep you thriving for the long term. That's why I take Complement Plus every day. Complement Plus contains the eight critical nutrients in dosages optimized specifically for plant-based eaters. Plus, they're completely transparent about ingredient sourcing and third-party testing, publishing the results directly on their website. As a special discount for our viewers, just use the code WFPB15 at checkout to save 15% off of your order. Welcome back to the show, everybody. Today we have got a fantastic recipe for you, a pineapple upside down cake. Now our membership community has been asking for this recipe for a long time and I finally figured it out. So we're gonna jump right in. I'm gonna tell you a couple things first. Uh, what you wanna start with first, I've already done. Uh, I had a jar of pineapple juice and I used three cups of pineapple juice and I just put it in a saucepan and cooked it down uh, on a, just a kind of a low heat on the burner until uh, the three cups reduced down to about one cup. And that is what's gonna create our caramely goodness in the bottom of that pan instead of butter and brown sugar. So we're gonna do that first. We're gonna uh, arrange our pineapple in our pan. This is just a nine inch silicone uh, cake pan. I have my oven preheated to 350 degrees. And instead of cherries, we're gonna use raspberries because the Cherries that you typically use for a pineapple upside down cake are maraschino cherries. And if you don't know what happens or how maraschino, maraschino cherries are made, they're regular cherries that are soaked in a bleaching agent. To take all of the color out, I don't know why, maybe so that they have a more consistent red color, but they take all of the color out and then they dye them red and soak them in I think sugar syrup and probably cherry flavoring. So that's why we're gonna use, I just have some frozen raspberries here and I like to use them frozen, uh, start with them frozen so that when they bake, uh, they don't just dissolve into the cake. It gives them a little bit of a head start. So I'm just arranging, this is a fresh pineapple that I'm using and I'm just arranging them in the bottom of the pan. But you could use, uh, you could use frozen pineapple or even canned pineapple. I'm just not a huge fan of using canned pineapple because I feel like it always tastes a little bit metallic and it is an acidy food that is soaking in a, or sitting in a can for who knows how long. And I think, you know, acidy foods tend to leach metals out of the cans, even though they're probably coated with something. So it's always better to use fresh, and you could use fresh raspberries too, but I really think part of the key to them not just dissolving into your cake is that they start out frozen. So you just wanna arrange them in some kind of pattern. I know the rings, those canned ones, they always have the pretty rings though, and it makes it look so nice, but in the, the interest of health, we're gonna use some fresh pineapple here. Okay, just about there. You can try to make a really, you know, pretty pattern with them. Kind of works out a little bit. And then just stick your cherry or your uh, raspberries just randomly in between your pineapple slices. And that just gives a little punch of color little punch of that really tart raspberry flavor. Okay, I think I'm gonna stop there. Right. All right, so now on to the cake. Move my pan here. And if you want a printable version of the recipe, it'll be in a link in the details below. So like with most of my cakes, I start out with rolled oats. These are organic rolled oats. 
This is one and a quarter cup of rolled oats that we're gonna grind into a flour. I'm gonna set this up here a little bit, out of my way. And we're just gonna do a, kind of a light grind. You, you don't wanna see any of the, the rolled oat flakes left, but you don't wanna grind it super, super fine. So there we go. I probably only ground for 15 seconds or so. So we're going to pour that in the bowl and keep this handy because we're going to use that again for our dates. Then I have one cup of almond flour and there isn't a replacement for that. You can't use just all oats. Uh, I've tried using just all oats and it just, it's too dense. It's a little bit gummy and the, so the almonds just give it a nicer texture. Then I have uh, one and a half teaspoons of baking uh, powder and three quarters of a teaspoon of baking soda. And you want to stir that up gently first. Get those all incorporated. Let's see if we can get any of those almond flour chunks out of there. Probably would be better to use a whisk if you're really wanting to get all the chunks out. But when you put your wet liquids in there, that'll all stir out too. Okay, now until the wet ingredients. So I have a half a cup of pitted dates. These are deglet dates. You can use medjool dates too. Uh, then we have a teaspoon of vanilla. A tablespoon of lemon juice, which is about the juice of a whole lime or a lemon. And that, that's another acid that kind of helps, uh, helps with the rising because all of these juices from the pineapple makes the cake kind of heavy. So it needs a little extra oomph to get that that batter to rise. We have a cup of water. And we're just gonna blend this until our dates are completely pulverized. While we're waiting for that, I'd like to share with you some background on our show. The Whole Food Plant-Based Cooking Show is crowdfunded, which means these free weekly recipe videos, along with our entire catalog of recipes on our website, plantbasedcookingshow.com, and our new Plant-Based Cooking Made Easy cookbook are all made possible in part by the generous patronage of our supporting members. By becoming a supporting member, you gain access to great member perks like monthly product giveaways, free downloads of our eBooks, and access to our in-depth courses, including our 28 Days Plant-Based Made Easy course, where we offer a step-by-step -step guide to making the switch to a fully plant-based diet. We create this show for the hundreds of thousands of viewers just like you who tune in each month from all over the world to make it easy for everyone to live a plant-based lifestyle. So if you love our content, please join us on our mission and become a supporting member today by following the link in the description. Okay, let's get back to the show. Okay, that looks pretty good. Oof. Okay, now before I pour this in here, into the dry mixture, I'm gonna pour in our uh, pineapple syrup down into the bottom because once this goes in there, the batter starts thickening and it gets a little bit harder to spread evenly. So you get your pineapple syrup, right, that we've cooked down. And you just wanna pour that over the pineapple and raspberries. And you want it to be a little bit cooled down. You don't want it to be like piping hot right off the burner. Okay, now we're gonna mix our batter. So just pour that into the flour. Mix. This recipe is so tasty. We've had many of these pineapple cakes lately, just testing and trying what works. 
but we finally got it. And I'm really looking forward to having this for dessert tonight. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now you just wanna pour it over the pineapples. You don't wanna pour it right in the center. You kinda of wanna, you know, pour it around in a circle because you don't want it to move your pineapple too much. If you've, you know, if you've made a, a design with them or a pattern. Okay. There we go. And then you just lightly move that around, smooth the top down a little bit. And that pineapple juice, you can see it's coming up around the edges a little bit. That's okay. That's all going to bake into the cake and it's going to leave a little bit of that syrupiness, you know, when you flip it over and it kind of oozes a little bit. Oh, yum. All right. So oven is at 350. So in it goes. Okay guys, it is out of the oven. It had baked for 40 minutes and it's kind of hard to tell because it's such a juicy type of cake when it's done, but it should be firm to the, you know, when you're pressing on the top. So now I've, it's been cooling for about 10 minutes. Now I'm just gonna loosen around the edge just to make sure it's not sticking anywhere. And then we're gonna flip this guy. This is always the nerve wracking thing right here. And because these silicone pans are not, they're not uh, solid, it's a little bit trickier because you got kind of got to put your hand on the bottom. Let's see. Hmm. <laughs> okay. Oh my gosh. One, two, three, flip. Look at that. Oh my gosh, it smells so amazing. Mm. And something about this cooked pineapple, because typically this bottom gooey stuff is butter and brown sugar. It smells buttery. When you cook that pineapple juice down, it smells buttery. All right, time to get a plate and I'll meet you at the table for a taste. Okay, ready for a taste. Here we go. Let's see. Don't want to ruin the prettiness of it. Oh wow. Yum, 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 yum. Look at that. Mmm. And that pineapple juice made this gooey, caramely. Oh ho ho. Yum. Let's see. You are not going to believe this doesn't have sugar or butter. It's buttery, super sweet, but the tartness of the raspberry and the pineapple cuts through. Mmm, still warm. Go ahead and give this a like, guys. Try it out. Let me know what you think, and I'll see you next week for another recipe.